the Carrion King. From ancient vampire bloodlines where the original abhorrent king spawned. Shunned by their kin for their cannibalistic ways, they scattered out into the realms, weaving trails of madness through the ruins left by the Age of Chaos and becoming the first generation of abhorrent ghoul kings. The origins of the abhorrents are an ancient and tragic tale. During the Age of Myth, the first abhorrent roamed the realms. He had been a favored servant of Nigash, and back then he was fair and strong, and surrounded by a loyal court of knights and nobles. Wherever he traveled, he administered justice in the name of the great necromancer, building hollowed shrines dedicated to the worship of the god of death and glorious mausoleums where departed ancestors could be given their due. He had also helped the weak and infirm pass into the underworlds and took life from tyrants who misused their mortal existence. Before becoming the first abhorrent, this champion was loved and feared. The civilizations that paid their due to Nigash welcomed his coming and lined their streets with grave rose petals as he walked amongst them, where those who usurped the natural order of life and death were made to feel the full measure of his wrath. Though the truth of his decline has been lost to the march of time, it is believed by many that the king fell out of favor with Nigash and was punished with a hideous transformation. No longer was he welcomed as a benevolent savior. Instead, he was shunned and even hunted by those empires for whom he had done so much. Malformed and filled with anger against his former master, he became a monster like no other and began prowling the nightlands of Shayesh. He continued to travel from land to land, but instead of granting boons to the great necromancer's loyal subjects, he, he offered them only a portion of his bitter malice. Such was the devastation spread by his fury that scores of Nagash's kingdoms were destroyed, their lords slain, and their people torn apart and their cities reduced to naught but ruins and broken corpses. Such an insult could not be bore by Nigash, and so he ordered his Mortarks, most loyal and powerful of his servants, to bring the wayward king to heal. The Mortarks of Night, Sacrament, and Blood gathered their unliving armies, and in a series of brutal wars managed to scatter the last of the king's forces. The one known as Yershuron was brought before Nigash, but rather than obliterating his soul, the great necromancer imprisoned his former servant in a prison called Shroud Cage, a towering edifice of broken promises. Its walls reflected endless untruths upon the king, reducing him to a raving wreck, as twisted in mind as he was in body, so the king might have stayed for all eternity, had not the god king Sigmar descended from Azir. In the first years of the Age of Chaos, Sigmar invaded the realm of death, incensed by Nagash's perceived betrayal at the all points. During Sigmar's rampage through the great necromancer's domain, his armies brought down the bastion that held the shroud cage, unwittingly allowing the thing that would become known as a carrion king to scuttle forth from the ruin. Loosed in the shadows, the first abhorrent began to build his court once more. He found those knights who had served the wars against Nagash's Mortarks, those who were still loyal to their sovereign lord, and upon them he bestowed a portion of his grand madness before setting out to travel the lands once more. In his insanity, the Carrion King believed himself the benevolent champion he had once been, when in truth he had become more monstrous than ever. Cities of cowering mortals, tomb fortresses of undead warriors, and invading chaos armies all had the abhorrent kindness visited upon them, and were left broken and butchered. The Carrion King found a willing source of servants amongst lost and depraved mortal cannibals, and in these times, such wretches were plentiful indeed. With his blood, he created sacopants to sing his praise from the foot of his dark throne, and many of these in turn went on to create their own courts. So it is that each flesh eater court is a reflection of the first court, their abhorrent trying to recreate the madness in the memories passed on to them through blood. It was during the same age that Nagash was laid low by Archeon the ever chosen of the Chaos Gods. The great necromancer was not destroyed completely, and was spirited away by his Mortarks. He would slowly regain his sundered power. Nevertheless, 
In his absence, the empire of the Carrion King expanded greatly. The abhorrence he created spread throughout Shayish before traveling through the realm gates to found kingdoms in far distant lands. Like all inhabitants of the mortal realms, the courts were set upon by the armies of the Dark Gods, but where most civilizations crumbled to dust under the relentless advance of chaos, the Flesh Eaters thrived. For every army of Mordons that were hacked apart or set ablaze by idolater warriors, more would rise from the pitiful masses that had been left to wither and die in the ruins of once glorious cities. United by the madness of an abhorrent, these Mordons turned their hunger into deadly weapons. During the Age of Chaos, when anarchy and ruination abound, what few tales were told of the Carrion King came to an abrupt end. Though the influence of his derangement persisted and continued to grow, his whereabouts became completely unknown. More mysterious still are his motives and loyalties, for none can truly say whether the Carrion King continues to rage against Negash, or if in his madness he believes himself to be in the great necromancer's good graces. Many of those courts descended from him fight alongside the undead armies of the Mortarks but others attack the servants of Negash on sight. Those whose cursed lineage is least removed from the Carrion King still live within the ruins of his ancient kingdom, deep within Shayesh. In them, the curse of the king is strong, and their collective madness feeds off the, the pre permit. Those whose cursed lineage is least removed from the Carrion King still live within the ruins of the ancient kingdom, deep within Shayesh. In them, the curse of the king is strong, and their collective madness feeds off and permeates the land. The further from the ruinous empire the courts stray, the more their delusion diverge from the Carrion King, though the degree of their insanity remains undiminished. The full truth of Yushuron's tale has been forgotten by all but one, the great necromancer. Indeed, Nigash remembers well what transpired, and still seeks his former champion across the mortal realms. The First Court Before his descent into madness, a court of knights and nobles followed Yashuron on his journeys. Drawn from different corners of the realms, this court comprised the finest and most noble of warrior lords, and together they rode resplendent and glorious children of the night. Some were peerless statesmen entrusted by their liege to impart chivalry to the kingdoms to which they traveled. Others were mighty warlords commanded to defend the meek and eradicate the unjust. These knights were still unshakably devoted to their king, even after he had been afflicted by Nagash's curse, fighting alongside him as he waged war throughout Shayesh. When the Mortarks were sent to apprehend Yashuron, his court fought to the bitter end. Many died, others were scattered, yet even in defeat they remained loyal. Some believed it was the knights of the court that had lured Sigmar towards the stronghold where their liege was imprisoned. Freed from the shroud cage, the Carrion King gathered those who had been his courtiers to his side once more, passing his insanity to them and making them the first court in his resurrected empire. Lord Marrowbroth took up his position of old as protector of the Carrion King, gathering elite Mordaunts to his ra ragged banner to ensure no harm would again befall the Sovereign. The swift and secretive Baron Gizzard commanded ghouls and great patrols around the borders of his lord's burgeoning land, seeking out enemies who dared draw near and slaughtering any who let their guard down. These and others were the first of the Carrion King's cursed descendants as they carved out gruesome domains in Shayish during the Age of Chaos, before spreading out into the realms to find new courts of their own. Of this initial generation of abhorrence, little else is known. Their history is lost beneath a veil of time and madness. It is said that some travel to the realms as arch-regents, and others fight beside the Carrion King to this day. And that's that's the Carrion King. Um, I'm a little disappointed that we don't actually have any named characters within Flesh Eaters. I think it'd be really cool to have one. Uh, like <laughs> Baron Gizzard. That'd be a cool like model to have. I, I guess it would look like just an Arch Regent or something. 
But I, I feel like that's something the Flesh Eater courts are kind of lacking is uh, more flavor with their characters. I don't know how you'd give them perspective or anything because they are insane. I guess you'd give, you could talk about the de specific delusion that main character has and what they believe. And now that I'm saying it, I really want that. I think it'd be a very interesting take for the Flesh Eater courts and, and would provide a lot of flavor for... Uh, for their army to have an actual named character and hero and give the perspective of them instead of this general like, oh, they see themselves as knightly and do-goodery. Um, but on that, I I really like them. They're, they're a fun army. They have some fun lore that you could play around with. I, I hope you liked it. I hope you check them out too. I really recommend that. But with that said, thank you for sitting here. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time. Have a good day.